In this video, what we're going to do is talk a little bit about the enclosed current. We're going to wrap up our discussion of Ampere's Law with a particular example of a thick wire. So here I have Ampere's Law. We unpacked the left-hand side of this for uh, an example that's very similar to this. And in this video, we're going to talk about the right-hand side. So what I have here is a, is a thick wire that has a constant current density running through it. Um, and it's a cylindrical wire, so that means that the cross-section is, is circular, right? So it has a sort of like circular shape on the end. And so the total amount of current that runs through that wire is equal to the current density times the cross-sectional area uh, associated with the particular wire. And in this case, if the wire has a radius of A, that means that the total current that we are going to see is going to be equal to the current density times pi A squared, right? Uh, now that's for any sort of uh, loop that contains uh, the whole wire. So their details about what goes on inside is a little bit different. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a choice. We're going to uh, calculate what the uh, magnetic field is by taking a loop that goes around the wire like this. So if we know that the current points in to the, from the left to the right, then we want to go around the loop in this direction because that would be the direction that the magnetic field points. Now, in the previous video, we went through the whole argument about why an Amperian loop that is of radius r um, produces uh, a result, which is basically the magnetic field magnitude times the perimeter of the loop. Um, and that, that is exactly the situation we're in here. The magnetic field that's produced by this wire uh, points circumferentially around the loop. And so the integral that we would get just as before, uh, suggests that b dot dl, b and dl point in the same direction. Um, so the dot product is, is uh, much simpler. Um, the magnetic field is constant at a given choice of the distance. So we end up with the integral of dl, which is just the perimeter of the loop we've chosen. In this case, it's a circular loop. So the magnetic field times 2 pi r is what we get um, in this case. Now the right-hand side of this equation is how much, charge, uh, how much current have we enclosed times mu naught? Well, in this case, we have enclosed exactly the total amount of current that is uh, passing through the entire wire. And so the, left -hand, or the right-hand side of this equation is exactly mu naught times whatever the current is that is running through that wire. Now we know from before that that is the current density times the cross-sectional area. Um, but it's exactly just the total amount of current that's in this situation. So just like we did with Gauss's law, we can sort of uh, take the, um, uh, the geometric quantities onto the other side. And we can find that the magnitude of the magnetic field for this kind of wire is mu naught i over 2 pi r. This is exactly the equation that we got for a very long wire. Now, one thing that I should mention about this is that we've actually made a couple of assumptions here sort of implicitly. Um, we assumed that the magnetic field in this situation um, points only um, circumferentially, that is, around the wire. Um, that situation, or that assumption, has to do with the fact that we are dealing with a very long wire. So we've baked in the assumption of a very long wire in doing this problem. Um, it isn't necessarily the case that that's what the magnetic field has to do if the wire is uh, a finite length or has sort of other pieces of it that are hanging around. Um, so the fact that we got the long wire uh, result is actually because of the assumption that we made about the direction the magnetic field points uh, and its size. So what this does is sort of wrap up Ampere's Law for us. It tells us that um, we can get a relationship between uh, the magnetic field and the current that's enclosed, namely through this integral that goes, uh, in this case, around the wire. <coughs> when you want to use Ampere's Law in uh, all of your problems, right, the ones that it's appropriate for are ones where you can argue what this dot product is. That is, you can make it very simple. So you want to pick um, a loop that aligns with the magnetic field direction, and one where you can argue that the magnetic field is constant, so you can pull it out of the integral and then just calculate the magnetic field times the uh, perimeter associated with where there is magnetic field. Finally, 
Um, we talked about sort of what the current looks like when it, you enclose it um, for a, a, a loop that is outside of the wire itself. This can actually be used inside as well. You have to think carefully about what the uh, current enclosed in that situation actually is because it's quite a bit different. That problem is much, much easier to solve by using Ampere's law than it is by using Bo Savar, which has to deal with volume currents, and that's a really challenging um, integral to actually calculate.